from a broader perspective if the stock market index is going up during a particular time period it's referred as bull market and if the stock market index is going down during a particular time this is referred as bear market confused why suddenly i started to talk about stock market am i switching to stock market well of course not friends in case you want to understand stock market and make money out of it then you must first learn the stock market's language and its core concept similarly if you want to learn cloud technologies and make a successful career out of it you must first learn its basic terms terminologies and basic cloud jargon hello and welcome back to the tech blackboard today in this third episode of our azure fundamental full course series I am going to take you through a lot of cloud terms that are essential to be understood at the very onset of your cloud learning. I have seen many beginners jumping directly working on cloud while they are still struggling on basic concepts. In today's video, we are going to learn about some of the very important cloud terms like public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud or you can also say cloud deployment models. I will then explain the distribution of responsibilities between you and the cloud providers in the context of IAS, PaaS and SaaS. And then I will tell you a lot of other cloud types which you may not have heard of but they are important for you to know as a cloud professional. So do not skip a beat, watch the video very carefully, take notes and learn something new today. In the last episode, I gave you an overview of IAS or Infrastructure as a Service, PaaS, Platform as a Service and SaaS which is Software as a Service. And in this episode, I present to you a different perspective and compare each of these cloud computing models side by side and we will also understand how they are different from the on-premises data centers. I hope you remember about how data centers are built on premises. If you missed watching the part 2 of this series, it's a must watch to get the basic understanding on on-premises, IAS, PaaS and SaaS. Link is now flashing in the i button on the top right corner and also available in the description box. Coming to this example on the very left, you can see major layers with different components used to build any data center. At the very bottom of this layer, you can see that we have storage, network and servers. As we move up in the list, we start to shift our focus from hardware layers to the software ones. Now the next important layer is virtualization. What is virtualization will be covered in a lot more detail in the following parts. But for now, just understand that virtualization is a technology that stimulates hardware functionality to create software based IT services like application, servers, storage and networks. On top of virtualization layer, we have operating systems like Windows or Linux, middleware, runtime and then we have our application layer that primarily consists of database and the front-end application. So when it comes to your on-premises data center, it is your responsibility or the company's responsibility to maintain all these layers and all these components. In contrast to this, when we move from on-premises to the cloud solution, the very first choice for most is IAS or infrastructure as a service. Now here you can see the bottom four layers, the responsibility to maintain or procure new storage devices, create networks, setting up servers and in fact virtualization is now the responsibility of cloud providers like Azure, GCP or AWS. In the coming episode, I will also tell you what different kind of virtualization techniques are there and how they are used in cloud technologies. So the beauty of IAS or cloud is that you or your company is now free from big responsibilities of setting up huge data centers. You can offload this responsibility to a cloud provider and focus more on the solution or the application. So basically you focus more on what operating system is needed or maybe you decide on middleware or runtime needed to run your database or host your application. Your focus is now on more productive tasks for your business and you pass the mundane and heavy activities of creating and maintaining data centers to the cloud provider. So life is getting better and less complex as we move deeper to the cloud solution. Now let's check out the PaaS or platform as a service. Now here you can see that you or the company, you just now need to focus on your data and your application. 
Here in the pass, you can see that the cloud providers delivers the hardware and software tools to the users over the internet and you as an end user use them for your application development and pay for it. Perfect. So what about SaaS? Well, as per the definition, SaaS is software licensing and delivery model in which software is licensed on a subscription basis and is centrally hosted. SaaS is also known as on-demand software or web-based software or web-hosted software as well. To make it simple to understand, let me give you an example. Have you ever used Gmail? Yes, you heard me right. Gmail is an example of SaaS or software as a service. So ask yourself what exactly you manage in Gmail. Do you know which server it is hosted on or what is the underlying hardware? Where is the database? What is the middleware or the runtime? Well, I'm sure like me, you don't know it either unless someone of you has the insider knowledge. So in case of Gmail, we are not bothered about any of these details. In fact, this is the beauty of SaaS. Use it, consume it and that's all what you need to care about SaaS solutions. It's just like a pizza that is delivered at your home. You don't know where it was baked. How was the pizza dough made? What is the exact making process? All you care about is the taste and of course you just pay for it. For a better understanding, let me share some examples. Here you can see that in IAS, we have Microsoft Azure Virtual Machines, Amazon EC2 and Google Compute Engine. Then in the past side, we have Azure Kubernetes Services, AWS Lambda and Google App Engine. And lastly, we have SaaS, which contains services like Gmail, Slack and Microsoft Office 365. Now that you have some examples of each computing model from all of the three major cloud providers, give yourself a chance to read more on each and understand them better. Many of these will be covered in the subsequent parts. Now friends, while I'm talking to you, I get this idea of creating a video where I can show you what are the different services called in various cloud providers. For example, virtual machines in Azure are called EC2 in AWS and compute engines in GCP. If you want this video, just let me know in the comment section and write yes. And this will make me understand that yes, you are interested in these kind of videos. Now let's move towards another very important concept and talk about deployment models in cloud. As you can see on the screen, deployment models can be divided into three categories. The first one is public cloud, then we have private cloud and then we have hybrid cloud. First, let's look at the definition for each starting with public cloud. So public clouds are owned and operated by third party cloud service providers like Azure, AWS and GCP. We just talked about these three major cloud providers and their offering in the previous section. Moving on with the definition, it says that these cloud providers deliver their computing resources like servers and storage over the internet and you can access these services and manage your account using a web browser. And then we have private cloud. So private cloud is where the computing services are offered to users over the internet or a private internal network. Services and infrastructure are maintained on a private network. Companies on-site data center can be used for private cloud and sometimes companies also pay third-party cloud providers to host their private cloud. Friends, I gave you a lot of details on data centers and how they are built in the second part of this series. In case you want to watch that part, the link is right there in the i button and in the description box. Moving on, we have hybrid cloud. Hybrid cloud, as the name suggests, is a combination of public and private cloud. A hybrid cloud typically extends a connection from an on-premises data center to a public cloud. Now let me add few more points. Public cloud is multi-tenanted, which means a single software instance is shared amongst various users and groups. And as we can read here, public cloud is third party operated like Azure, AWS and GCP. Then on the other hand, private cloud is single tenanted and it is operated for a single business. And finally, we have hybrid cloud, which is kind of best of both worlds. And as I just mentioned, it's a combination of both public and private cloud. Now let's revise once again. We have three types of cloud based on computing models. The first one is infrastructure as a service or IAS. 
Then we have platform as a service, which is also known as PaaS. And then lastly, we have software as a service, which is also abbreviated as SaaS. And then we have three major types of cloud based on deployment models. The first one is private cloud. Then we have public cloud and then we have hybrid cloud. And friends, before we move ahead, one important thing, is this the only time we are learning the concepts of cloud computing models and cloud deployment models? Of course not. There is going to be a lot of reiteration of important cloud concepts, including these ones throughout the course. As I always say, repetition is good. Each repetition plays more traces of the event in your memory. So I will give you more details on important cloud concepts, more examples, use cases in the subsequent parts so that you get a solid grip on cloud concepts. So are these the only types of cloud? Well, yes, if you talk on a very high level, but when you take a little deep dive, there are many more. Let me quickly list down the other major ones. I will not go in details as this is out of the scope of fundamental course, but of course you should know all of them. So here comes the first one, which is called BAS or backend as a service. So BAS is a cloud service model in which developers offload or outsource all the behind the scenes aspects of a web or mobile application so that they only have to write and maintain the front end. For example, simply calling an API for authentication and storage without having to worry about the implementation or infrastructure. Then comes a similar concept of MBAAS, which is mobile backend as a service. So friends, mobile backend as a service is a cloud computing architecture that provides mobile application which access to the servers, storage, databases and other resources they need to run. We then have desktop as a service or DAS, which is a cloud computing offering that securely delivers virtual apps and desktops from the cloud to any device. Here I quickly want to add that DAS conceptually is very same as VDI, but different in the implementation. With VDI, an organization deploys virtual desktops from its own premises data centers and DAS is essentially the same thing, but this one is on cloud infrastructure. Moving on, here comes container as a service or CAS. So CAS is a cloud service that helps manage and deploy apps using container based abstraction. And please note that CAS can be deployed on premises or in a cloud. I will share more details on containers and Kubernetes in the upcoming parts. And then we have very interesting function as a service or FAS, which is a serverless way to execute modular pieces of code on the edge. In the next video, I will explain what is serverless and how it works. Very important concept. So please do not miss to subscribe to the Tech Blackboard channel. A lot of interesting stuff on cloud is coming up. Next one is storage as a service or STAS. Now storage as a service is a business model in which a company leases or rents its storage infrastructure to another company or individuals to store the data. And then we have artificial intelligence as a service, which is an end to end solution allowing businesses to use AI based services they need on pay per use or pay per service model. In the coming parts, I will not only explain pay per use or pay per service, but I will also explain you what is pay as you go pricing model. Now friends, would you believe if I told you that there is something which is called anything as a service or XAAS? Yes, trust me, there is a concept called anything as a service. Basically, it's a general category of services related to cloud computing and remote access. And in one sense, I can say that all the cloud services that you have read so far, all these comes under the category of anything as a service. So are these the only types? No, there are actually more. For example, network as a service, but that I will leave up to you to do some research. You may share in the comment section what is network as a service, maybe some examples. A good learning practice is to share your knowledge with everyone. That was all for today. A quick summary. Today we learned about private cloud, public cloud and hybrid cloud. Then I explained how the responsibilities of maintaining cloud components are divided between you and the cloud providers in the context of IAS, PaaS and SaaS. Finally, I told you what are the different other types of cloud. 
in the next video i will conclude all these cloud terms and concepts and then we will start with our azure fundamental course which will be fully synced with microsoft syllabus including the changes done on 5th of may so friends do share your comments and feedback we are available on facebook instagram and twitter if you find our content worthy please give us a like share our videos and subscribe to the channel Please do not miss to press that bell icon so that you get timely notification of our all the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for learning with us. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.